Okay, hello, another day, another video. Uh, in this video I'm explaining what pencils I use uh, and how I use them. It starts with me sitting down and explaining which pencils I use, why I use them and stuff like that. And then I show you on a canvas, on an acrylic portrait, uh, how I actually apply them on the canvas. And in this particular lesson I'm painting a rose and surroundings around that in a dress with a rose like this so uh, yeah and it was also actually an uh, answer to a patron question so um, if you like to be a patron if you like me to teach you how to paint there is a couple of things you can do you can go to patron there is a link in the description and you can and on my channel and you can uh, sign up for a five dollar patron and if you do i will help you with um, uh, through facebook or through patreon or with videos and stuff and if you want me to live stream with you a couple of times a month or whatever you can do a thirty dollar patronage and then i will actually spend some time with you so, on uh, on uh, a live stream so go check it out Anyway, give this video a thumbs up, leave a comment and share it with your friends and help me rebuild this, uh, this channel because my other channel was actually hacked in January and it's really hard to get into the algorithm again. So please help me spread a message and uh, keep watching, keep painting, keep living, having fun and stay cool. Yay! So... Um... I got this question from uh, one of my patrons so, and it was about which uh, pencils I used and I'm gonna answer the questions he sent me um, by video, this is Tom, Tom Bard Hello Knut, blah blah blah, and um, let's see, uh, I would like you to know about how to move paint on a canvas, okay, I'm gonna make a little video tutorial about that after this, in the same video, uh, uh, told me to use paint from the tube, yes, I used the paint from the tube straight like this because if you see uh, and I use old horn uh, I have some reds the yellows over here and um, you know the other colors here but the thing with these these um, these da Vinci brushes is that they are quite um, they are hard but not too hard so they are qu they are quite flexible, but then again, not so flexible. Plus one thing, they do not start to spread like a yeah, like a, when you paint. They kind of keep themselves together. They here, so it doesn't disturb the process. And you get packages like this Da Vinci. I don't know if you can get it where you live, or but. Uh, if you can get pencils like this, I like this set because it has all the ones and it's quite cheap. It doesn't cost much, so uh, it's not the, probably not the best quality, but it works for me. And here you have the smallest ones. When I and 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 I like the flat because it gives me control over the pencil strokes when I when I move it across the. Uh, canvas I'm going to show afterwards but I also use bigger ones of course that I buy that are more expensive this one is basically maybe it's some some medium in it something but they're quite big and that's for bigger surfaces uh, I usually paint quite big so I need bigger okay and many times I, I do actually do whole big paintings with just these because the small ones are the ones that you are using up first so if you 
make small paintings, you usually have a lot of these uh, after a while, and when you start painting big ones, you can burn these ones too. Uh, and uh, because the, when you're standing for hours and hours and hours, and you do these movements, you start to rip up the the uh, hairs, and then it start to form in the direction you usually use it. And actually, it can be quite nice to have a pencil. So don't throw it away. Just wash it, and you wash it in green soap or ordinary natural soap. You don't use any turpentine or anything when you wash them. You just wash them in, in and you can also put some soap into them so, so all the oil color that is in between doesn't dry. And when, before you start painting, you just wash them again so you can start painting. Uh, but I also, you know, when I, I paint for a while, they kind of become like this in the end, you know. And this one is, of course, dead now. But in the end, it's quite nice to have things like this that's, that isn't hard because you can use it to, well, uh, other things, you know. Well, you figure it out after a while. Anyway, and I for detail, these are also, uh, these are synthetic. Uh, they are bought on the store, right? they're called Chem. It's a, a store that sells uh, equipment. But this one is... Uh, a different uh, Raphael or something like that but this is more I guess this is synth synthetic but this is for minute detail details like eyes and and maybe if you want to make a uh, uh, make a shadow between two lines or something like that you use these too hard and I usually when I'm finished painting you must wash them in 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 uh, soap and you put some soap into them so you guarantee that you don't that you don't uh, they don't dry and get ruined like I have a couple of that I've forgotten you can see how that went the whole thing just becomes a little bit not so flexible anymore and I have to kind of chew on it to get all that and I have flat ones here too and you can get these in all all kinds of uh, of uh, types, I guess. And you can also use uh, sablon, but they are very expensive. So when you paint oil, uh, uh, I might recommend some some synthetic because this one is is quite nice. It's synthetic for big surfaces like this. This is also synthetic. It tend to make all the surfaces very, uh, very glatt, uh, 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 as it's called in Norway. It becomes too rigid. It becomes too flat. Yeah, too flat. There is no, there is no, um, there is no brush strokes left after you're finished. So, what happens when you use this uh, this uh, pig <laughs> made of pig hair? Is that the leaves the the nice strokes is it kind of binds the colors together inside when you paint and that is why I when I paint I tend to to grab color like this and I grab a color like this and I grab for instance a red like this and when I do a brush stroke some of the colors are oh, oh, it's quite dry here so I have to get some Attempt to get into the brush, but you see now you see you create these almost uh, rainbow like strokes where all the colors just goes into one another, and you can put in some blue and you get some green there and you get some red there so you keep crossing over colors like this in in different directions on the canvas and and you create some kind of a micro impressionist painting which when light hits it would just be an amazing um, dance of different colors on all levels big strokes small strokes and uh, that's how I do it and you just have to practice and 
and and just learn how to do it because I remember what I did when I first started out painting I used to do like this and I I mixed the colors on the palette and I tried to find the right color on the palette before I went to the canvas and I, I kind of do still do it but I will say I usually just know approximately which color is gonna be there and I grab it and I add color into the strokes on the canvas and you just keep on piling on it's it's hard to explain it's like I should explain how to play a piano it's it's very difficult to explain so the reason why I use these and these are called Da Vinci maybe you find some others that have the same properties uh, where you live uh, but I prefer and you don't need to buy the most expensive ones the, that is buy things that look so unbelievably great and and they cost like so much money and you forget to watch them one, watch them once and they are just gone and this is uh, to a uh, kind of a round one you get also get round pencils in in uh, in uh, in uh, this uh, this is probably a sable sable thing I don't even know what I got here you get them yeah I, I, it's, it's broken now but this is also pigs here you for, see what happens if you forget to wash it it just gets ruined it you throw it away and it's sad because of course it's money well, out of the window too so this is a different one it's also Da Vinci and it's also made of pigs here so uh, a boar or pig or whatever they call it maybe I can fix it I don't think so just have to throw it away uh, and they also come in I think there's Da Vinci also in, in different sizes so you can go on the internet and find Da Vinci so probably and they come in these ones you see what happens when you forget sometimes I've been working for so long that almost I, I can't even get myself to the bathroom and actually wash them and then comes like this so and this one too is a I don't really use these much uh, the synthetic ones because of what I told you it becomes like a glass almost and it mixes the colors together in a way that makes the it makes the makes everything look every texture look the same you have to create different textures from uh, to, to make a painting uh, uh, come alive and you can scrape with the back and you can use your nails if you have that and I also always keep keeps this one on top of my on my arm so I hold this like this and I just play as you can see in some of my videos on YouTube uh, yeah now I'm gonna just show you how I use use it on I'm gonna paint a little rose in, in uh, one of my paintings I'm gonna just gonna have a little tutorial how I think when I do it and see if I have forgotten some question that was asked um, so, so. Uh, answering my own question hmm. Oh yeah, yeah. Uh, how long before you paint back onto the first layer? There are two ways you can do that. If you can paint, keep painting wet and wet, you can actually build and build and build. But at some point, you can't actually add more. And the the, the, the last details or the, the the more details it come, the more good it is that it's a little bit dry between the layers. It don't have to be all dry. It just have to be so you can actually add more without the strokes under dissolving and and uh, coming into the new paint but you can also paint a whole painting and then go back the day after and keep adding paint but then you have to start using your hands so you don't uh, mess up what's under so you can keep on piling on you can keep on building the 
the cloth and the textures and all that for, for days actually until you let it dry for the first time. But you can also lay one layer and make it dry for a few days and then you just go back and you keep painting. As I said before, I use a 70% of um, linseed oil, cooked linseed oil and 70% no, 30% uh, sorry, 70% turpentine and 30% linseed oil cooked and it should be surface dry within a few days if it isn't too cold in, in the place you are working. Uh, it doesn't matter if it's 10 days or less, you just have to figure it out. Uh, I don't... I have one... When I first thought to hold a towel in my... S okay, oh yeah, the cement thing. Okay. Mm. No, you don't. Uh, light, uh, yeah, yeah, there was this one. Uh, da Vinci, uh, what about these brushes that you like to allow uh, or allow to result? I was thought to move the brush strokes along the path the light falls. Yeah, I don't know who thought you that. I don't see the point. Uh, the thing is to add paint and add texture. What you see, try to repeat what you see. And of course you think in directions, but that is actually in the directions of the, is this direction compared to that direction and so on. But all of this is just a dance, so you just have to keep on piling on. Uh, you can't have rules like, oh, I'm just going to do it in a way that the light falls, because then it becomes too rigid. It's like playing the piano with one note, and that won't function. So, so um, just, just... Try to try to make things you paint like there's a big difference between this and this, and these two can't have the same texture or the same direction. So when you paint this one, you will maybe do this one and make the brush strokes more flat. And if you, if you have a surface of glass, contra this, maybe it's even a good idea to use these that doesn't give you any brush strokes at all, compared to this that will give you the brush strokes. And here you can actually go in one direction. But when it comes to this, you have to start building, like, like this and like this, and, and you just have to start picture this is a canvas now and you just have to start building how, how it feels to you physically and there's a little cloth and you can go in and you can you can do all kinds of shit so like you do with one color this and then you go in more white and you go like this because the blue and orange in this is different it's a complementary contrast so you you add some more reddish or or something in this compared to that if it's you know you just have to keep keep seeing but there is only one rule you build from dark to to light uh, that's my rule anyway I darken the canvas and I build up to light I start with the lightest areas and I just keep on piling on okay I think that covers it uh, about the pencils um, So, how long before you paint back into the first layer? I can't cover that. May I share them with you? Ah, thank you. Uh, of course, you can share your thoughts with me. Um, okay. Yeah, I'm gonna paint a little and show you, and that's the next segment. So.
Okay. Okay. Lesson number two. Now, uh, when you see here, uh, there's a rose, and maybe it's a good thing that I show you what I'm working with. The roses, I hang it over there, so I get a direct uh, connection uh, that I see uh, there, and I repeat it there. So you know what I'm looking at, and the different, like, like when you when you use these uh, pencils, it's like since it is more there is light behind here, I go in with a little bit of thick paint. Uh, you you have to think like you are creating this this um, almost 3D thing and I keep now you see it was a little bit too yellow and I see it should be maybe a little bit more bluish with or violets somewhere around there or greenish but anyway this is how I I use these brushes uh, kind of build and I, then I start building close to that like this like this and go over it and I see there are some um, it's hard for me to concentrate when I'm talking I'm sorry to say because my brain is I'm not communicating with the center. See here, keep it down there a little bit, but then I start to also go into the other places with some of the same colors. Um, I want to lift it up a little bit. So then I go in and I do like this. And now it comes down to the pressure you add on the, on the, now, First I went in and I pushed a little bit hard to get it in there. And when I'm gonna have this to this here, I, I go in and I'm more light handed. And it doesn't matter how big the pencil is. Uh, when I then uh, are doing the rows, I change colors. I take some reddish and some blue. And maybe even some black and I I go in and I make this shadow like this I paint kind of down then I start to go in this way and I kind of try to find and in this picture actually it's a little bit also a little bit out of focus that can be a good thing because then you don't want to, you don't start to push, put in too much, too many lines where it is necessary. If you look at uh, Gerhard Richter, he's very good at that. Uh, let's see now, and I start to put in more colors. I want to darken it. So I go in that way maybe, in that way, and I just keep on, and I can see there is some, some green actually inside there, you can probably can see it on the video. Then I take some yellow and I just slightly go in, yellow or green, and I kind of push it in here to get a more, because there's a lot of red and there's a deep color but you will find the complementary contrast here as well. So that's how I work. And you can see that in my bigger videos or longer videos on YouTube. If you want to enhance it, I can take, uh, I want some more. I used the uh, Alzarin or Kaplak a lot and, and uh, the primary colors like uh, Cadmium red and cadmium yellow and uh, lemon yellow and these yellow cadmium yellow 
lemon, <laughs> I think it's called. You see now it start to come alive, but I also want a more, there's a leaf on the flower, so I want that to. So then I start dragging it this way. So I maybe even get some of the white into that. So it will create a more softer, uh, trans, uh, yeah, softer. Uh, we call it. Or Vagang, on for Norwegian. Uh, yeah, you know what I mean. Softening out the, the difference between this and this. Uh, I need, and here it does come in. I'm just gonna go back. Uh, this one. And here it actually can come in because here I can actually use this, which is more. It's quite uh, flexible also, but then I can actually go in and I can control a little bit more. How I put it on. See now, start to, and there's also a shadow down here, but I kind of keep it in the dark. And I keep adding paint. Now you see it starts to come a little bit more alive, and. I also wanted to now I see now that I need to push this down a little bit and since the rows are in the reddish the shadow behind here is probably in the green I also can use a little bit just a touch of black But then again, I push it down a little bit and I can keep on going back and forth and back and forth until I feel that it starts looking like the object I'm, I'm painting. And what's really important is that don't cheat. I mean, I have never made a painting become... I've never been actually... I have never felt that any of my paintings reach the level I want them to reach. It's because of my skill set are good enough. And uh, I started painting when I was like 20, 21, 22. Uh, and um, it is kind of limited to how good you can get, maybe? I don't know, but anyway, my point was, I'm never able to come to where I want to because of the skills, but I'm getting closer. But when I look at one of my, when I, when I use a photograph, I try to, also when I'm sketching, I also always try to reach as far as I can towards the the object, if it is a still life, it's the still life, the onion or the whatever. I always try to make it feel like I have exhausted all my <laughs> all my capabilities. You know, it's gonna, it's not finished until it looks like the object you were going to paint. Of course, paint and photo are two different things, and it adds a, a dimension that that photo doesn't do. It adds more sculptural dimensions to it, and that's why I look at paintings not actually as as two dimensional surfaces, but as uh, reliefs. And that's how you're going to think. You're not going to think about it as a two-dimensional, but you're going to build it as if 
We're going to build a real room on the canvas. And therefore, it's very important that you make all the all the textures different. Now you see I just drag it down like this and then poof, it comes right out. And then later I can go out and I drag it in there and I go over it over and over and over and over and over and over and over again. And then I put the lasur on which you probably have seen on YouTube. And I paint over that again. And I just keep going and going until I feel I'm getting somewhere. Um, so, now when you paint, you think directions, you can do this way, that way, this way, but try to see the direction. There are directions in everything. For some reason there are directions. This is probably how the physical world is build up and um, yeah so okay I hope you get my point I'm gonna post a full video of this of this process on YouTube this file will not be a part of it but I think um, but you can see it from sketch to finished painting later. I hope this explains a little bit. You see here she has this like these pencils. She has this bond around her her waist or made of hemp or something. And that's where often pencils like this comes in that you can go in and make these fine lines between. But then again, it can also be done with this, with only brush strokes. So you just have to paint. The best way to learn how to paint is to paint. See here, and I can go in like this. And like this, like in here, so it feels like that goes behind. And to make that feeling even bigger or greater, you put in some really thick there. And then you just keep on working. So, mm. yeah, there's a shadow. There. And there is a metal thing that holds it together. It's quite funny because in that metal thing there are greens and there are yellows and there are all kinds of colors. Actually bright green. So and that's the beauty I think about if you look at Vermeer's paintings. He, have a, he has observed all these beautiful primary colors and that is why his paintings are so alive. And Rembrandt understood exactly the same thing without actually knowing anything about the physics of it. So it's quite exciting. I'm getting into the flow here, forgetting the time. But I hope this actually explains it. So, I'll just keep working on this. I hope it explains something for you. So, tell me what you think. Anyway. Okay. If you sign up for a $5 Patreon, I actually also do a Patreon giveaway, a small painting as you see pointing at there uh, every month so if you want to get your hands off one of my paintings and not just be my student or have me as a, your mentor 
you can actually sign up and also get a painting and that is not bad so check it out and help me rebuild and help me yeah become a better painter because i also learn when i learn teach you so it's kind of reciprocal as it's called okay see you in our next video i hope you enjoyed it